Hey guys, Mr. Post, and on today's video, we will take chemical reactions that are described in words and express them in a chemical formula that expresses the react. Okay, guys, here's the example we're going to start off with. We're going to write the complete chemical equation for aluminum reacting with oxygen. And one of the keys here is that let's just pull out of, this, out of the problem what's going on. We got aluminum, and it is reacting with, reacting is a plus sign, with oxygen. Now, one of the things I want you to recognize is that any time you have an element that just by itself, like this or like this, that's not in a compound, you have to ask, is the, uh, is the element going to be diatomic? Meaning, will there be a two after it? And the list that I gave you was the Brinkelhoffs. You know, the, uh, the way to remember whether or not we have a diatomic molecule or not was it a Brinkel, B-R-I. Okay, and if my element appeared on this list that we call the Brinkelhoff list, it will always exist as a diatomic molecule such as F2 or O2. And the fact that oxygen is right here on my Brinkelhoff list will remind me that this is actually O2. And I want you to see that aluminum does not appear on the list of seven elements that appear naturally diatomic. So that, those are the reactants my problem. Aluminum is reacting with oxygen. It's a synthesis reaction, and the synthesis reaction only produces one thing, and that's going to be a combination of aluminum and oxygen. Your last job here, guys, on the right-hand side, in the products, you've got to give me the subscript, how many oxygens and also how many aluminums. You have one of two choices. You can either do a Lewis dot structure to find out how many of each you need, or you can simply do the quicker way of crossing charges. Oxygens are 2 minus. Aluminum is a 3 plus. Let's cross them. The 3 goes over here, and oxygens 2 goes over here. So my reaction actually now becomes aluminum reacts, this is reacts, with oxygen to produce aluminum oxide, Al2O3. In this problem, guys, I kind of recommend if you press pause, try to jump ahead, try to solve the equation as it is, okay? Let's read through the problem here. Write the complete chemical equation for lithium reacting with magnesium chloride. Once again, the key word reacting is going to be a plus sign, okay? We saw that last time, so aluminum reacts with oxygen. Now it's lithium reacting with magnesium chloride. So let's pull these parts of the problem out and write them down. Lithium is the first thing we're going to look at here. So here's lithium. Let's just draw the chemical symbol for lithium. All right, I see the word reacting. Reacting is going to be a plus sign. It's going to react with magnesium chloride. All right, so here we go. We got chlorine and we got magnesium in a formula, and that's magnesium chloride. Awesome. They're going to produce something, okay? I've done a reaction. They're going to produce something. One of the things they need to key in on again, okay, anytime an element is by itself, such as lithium, Okay, anytime an element's by itself, I have to ask myself, is it a Brinkelhoff? Brinkelhoff meaning, is it a 2 or a 1? Now, this does not appear in the Brinkelhoff list, so I'm going to write this down here. You don't have to, but that means I have one atom of lithium. Magnesium chloride, okay, you need to cross the charges here. Magnesium is a 2 plus, chlorine is a 1 minus, and cross those numbers. So what's going to happen is that magnesium ends up bringing its 2 right over here. So I have MgCl2, and I also have a 1 going over here. Now, on the other side, what are we going to see? This is a single replacement reaction. And what we've seen in a single replacement reaction is that the element that is alone will attempt to bump out the other element of the same metallic character. So lithium is going to attempt to bump out magnesium. And actually, lithium is more active. If you consulted an activity series, you'd see lithium is more active, stronger than magnesium. And magnesium will now trade places with lithium. So what I see here on this side in the products is that magnesium is now alone. And what I also see is that lithium has taken magnesium's place. And so let's draw it right here. So lithium and chlorine are now together. The last thing I need to do is consult the Brinkelhoff list. Anytime an element is by itself, like magnesium here is by itself. If it's by itself and it's on the Brinkelhoff list, it becomes a 2 next to it, diatomic. This is not, so it will remain as a 1. Anytime the 1 is there, you do not need to express it, though. Over here, let's cross the charges. I've made new compounds. New compounds require new subscripts, and I get them by crossing the charges. A one down here, one there. Okay, guys, the problem is actually solved. If you express this, you can clean it up a little bit and make it nice and neat. How would I write it? Let's write it down here. Lithium reacts with magnesium chloride to produce magnesium 
and Li. CO, lithium chloride. Okay, I'm not asking you to actually balance it right now. I just want us to practice taking written problems, written reactions, and expressing them in a formula, in a typical chemical equation as we would express in our class. Okay, guys, why don't you press pause, read the problem, check it out, and try and give me the answer. In this case, we have sodium is reacting with Sodium is reacting, reacting is a plus sign, is reacting with nitrogen. Okay, those are my reactants. And let's list them. So sodium is Na, it's going to react with plus, in this case, nitrogen. And it's going to produce something new. This is a good example of a synthesis re uh, equation, synthesis reaction, where I have an element plus an element is going to give me something else. Okay, and they're going to come together to form a compound. First thing we got to check out, these both are by themselves. Anytime an element is by itself, I have to ask myself, is it an N2 or an N1? Is it an Na2, Na1? Okay, the Brinkelhoff list is what we used in class, and N is on the Brinkelhoff list. So let's put a 2 right there. And sodium is not, and so I'm just, for now I'll put a 1. We don't really need it there, but I'll put a 1 just to express what I'm talking about. Now on the other side of the equation, I'm going to show what they produce. They react together to produce something new, and that's going to be Na and N. Anytime you form a new formula, you actually have two options. You could Lewis dot structure this to find out what the formula will be, or you could actually cross the charges, and I prefer crossing the charges because it's a little faster, 3 minus for nitrogen, one plus for sodium, and the one goes over here, and the three goes right here. Now, we're not going to balance the equation. I'm going to write it over a little neater here. Okay, sodium reacts with nitrogen to produce sodium nitride. Boom. Anytime I have a one, like right here, and also a one over here, I do not need to express that. So the final answer is Na plus N2 yields Na3. N. Here's another shot, guys. Why don't you press pause, read the problem, try and solve it. I'm coming back with the answers. All right, in this problem, you have magnesium reacting with iodine. So magnesium plus iodine. And let's write this down over here. Mg plus iodine is going to react together to form something new. This is another example of a synthesis equation, and in a synthesis equation, I just combine the two, Mg and I. Really what I have to do now is go back and double check. Are these guys over here because they're isolated, they're alone, are they ones or twos? Magnesium is a one, it's not on the Brinkelhoff list, and iodine is on the Brinkelhoff list, therefore it's a two. They produce something new, a new brand new compound. In this case, magnesium is a 2 plus, iodine is a 1 minus. Let's cross the 2 down to there and cross the 1 over here. There we go, guys. The equation from the words is magnesium plus iodine will yield MgI2. And the very last thing we're going to practice today, guys, is just a quick decomposition problem. Um, I'm telling you in the written equation that water is decomposing, and I'm asking you for the chemical formula, chemical reaction for this. So let's begin here. Water decomposes. Decomposing is actually an arrow. Okay, it, it yields something, it produces something. And in a decomposition reaction, what you're going to find is that you only have one reactant. That one reactant is going to literally split apart. And you write down the atoms that it's made of over here. Over on this side, this does not mean react. This means water will decompose to form hydrogen and, this means an and now, and oxygen. Last thing to do, are these H's and O's 2's or 1's? H is on the Brinkelhoff list, it's a 2. Oxygen's on the Brinkelhoff list as well, it's a 2. They're both diatomic molecules. And the correct answer for this is really expressed right here. Water decomposes into hydrogen plus oxygen. They're both diatomic, and they both have twos. All right, guys, that was just a little bit of practice from the lesson we saw today on how to take equations and reactions that are expressed in words and express them as scientists do or chemists do in actually chemical formulas. All right, hope it was helpful, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a good day.